Hey everyone, uh, my name is Ty, this is my garage, and I guess I'm shooting another episode of this show called Ty's Garage. Uh, this is the Super Engine, and we need to get one of these on it. Alright, now for anyone who doesn't know, this is a timing belt. Uh, this is, I guess, the next area of steps we have to take care of on the Subaru engine. So it'd probably be important to talk about why this is the next step and to update you on where the engine is. Uh, in the last video, which was episode 7, I guess Rally Car Build Part 4, uh, I talked about how I ruined one of the valves on one of the heads uh, and basically set me back X amount of dollars, X amount of days, what have you. Uh, it's now fixed. It's bolted back on, looking uh, cleaner and fresher than ever with a brand new valve. Only bent one valve um, and got the head back from the machine shop the next day. I've just been waiting too long to make a video. So I uh, just went, got back from the Show Me Rally here in Missouri uh, this weekend and kind of inspired to get back in the groove of getting this car ready to go. So. The next step, now that we have the uh, long block assembled, uh, is to start working on timing. All the stuff that's on the front end of the engine, uh, water pump, oil pump, my belt tensioner, and my idlers are basically what we have to work on now. Um, so this is the next step, is getting one of these on. On a Subaru engine, there's uh, the water pump, the oil pump, like I have mentioned. Uh, you've got the cam sprockets or pulleys, however you want to call them. You've got the uh, main crank, which is basically also on the oil pump. That's part of the, they're all working together as a timing unit. Then you've got uh, two pulleys and an another idler sprocket. Uh, and then lastly, you've got the belt tensioner, which just keeps tension on the belt, keeps it tight and taut. Uh, so we're going to start by getting the little things out of the way, the idlers, the pulleys, the, the sprockets, the things that aren't units in and of themselves, just your basic uh, idler and timing assembly stuff. Um, so the first part uh, that I want to tackle is the tensioner. Uh, the tensioner is basically, again, what keeps tension on the belt uh, and keeps it tight. The reason I want to talk about this first is because it's probably one of the more complicated parts, even though none of it's really that complicated, the rest is just bolting things up. So. Um, we're going to have to make some modifications to the tensioner that I've got off of this 2.5D block because, of course, the 2.5D was a dual overhead cam engine and now we have a single overhead cam uh, head. And that is a problem because there's a bracket that comes off of our tensioner bracket, a bracket on a bracket dog, uh, that is in the way. It wouldn't have been in the way if we were using dual overhead cam heads, but because we're using single overhead cam heads, it's right in the way of where the the cam sprocket slash pulley would go. So we're going to buzz that thing off uh, and once that's modified we can bolt that up to the block uh, and then we can just go ahead and get all of our other idlers out of the way. So that way we can just get the, the basics done. So we're going to go over to the workbench which is probably in view with the wide enough angle lens and you'll probably see that it's a mess and we're going to whiz that thing off. So that's where we're going next. Alright everyone, um, I'm at the desk, you can see it's quite a mess. Hopefully the camera effects blur that out in the background. You don't see how much of a slob I am when it comes to my workspace. Uh, I'm going to plug in the end grinder. We're going to just you're gonna use a, a 4 inch you know, uh, Harbor Freight uh, special uh, angle grinder. We're just going to grind this thing off uh, just to get it out of the way of our cam. Now this of course, this piece here is the problem area. Uh, so we're just going to get a cut straight across and then hopefully get a clean cut the first time so I don't have to go in there and try to uh, modify it or clean it up. Uh, I'm going to take uh, some t-shirts, some towels, put something over the engine just to prevent any of the... That was a 10 millimeter ratchet uh, falling on the ground, nothing to be concerned of folks. Uh, I'm going to put a towel, some t-shirts over the exposed areas of the engine so we don't get you know metal uh, shards flying everywhere because this is probably going to be sparky. Uh, so that's going to just kind of help to protect my work area because they are awfully close together. Always wear some kind of eye protection. Uh, somebody out there is going to talk about how my glasses don't count, but uh, it's what I have, so bear with me. Uh, this will hopefully be cool to watch, otherwise I'm just filming this for B-roll footage. Turns out aluminum doesn't spark. 
All right, now I've loaded up my uh, my sanding flap disc uh, just to kind of even it out, make it look a little nicer, not like we're just hacking on things. It's always good to plug it back in. All right, I'm freehanding in really poor taste just to kind of show it while it's still on the uh, on the bench uh, and you can see in this area right here in the corner that's basically where uh, this little nub which I'm sure is still fairly hot no that's fairly cool uh, that that nub basically was in the way uh, and now it no longer is in the way so we got really you know if we're being perfectionists we have a really nice uh, polished surface here that we can now do absolutely nothing with other than keep it out of the way so that's what we did, and now it should bolt right up. Okay, uh, this is the front of the Subaru engine here. Um, you can see I've got you know kind of some things bolted up, some things not bolted up. Namely, uh, water pumps here now wasn't here before. Uh, I basically bolted it up just to make sure everything was going to fit right. I'm going to take it off and do a proper water pump video in the future because that's probably going to help somebody. Uh, so if I, if I can't help somebody with that, I'm going to. Um, I don't have my driver's side cam pulley bolted on, and that's because I had to take it off in order to realize that our bracket was not going to work as it was, so I had to take it off, um, and now it's ready to go back on. Something else you'll notice, I've got all these bolts just jutting out of the, the, uh, the, the, the block, and the point of that is that way I can remember where they go and what they do, and I don't lose them. Um, nice practice to learn because, you know, works with anything you're taking apart put it back into the mating surface once the component is removed and you won't uh, lose it or forget which screw goes where. So definitely recommend it. Uh, the bracket we just uh, sawed off is basically going to go right here where this triangle section of bolts goes. So I'm just going to start by unbolting the bolts. Remembering that the short one goes on the bottom. And then, just kind of starting them all, one by one. Now this is aluminum and aluminum and aluminum. Everything's aluminum. So, I mean, you're not trying to set the world on fire by bolting these bolts down. You just kind of got to get them tight. Especially for a bracket, you know. There's no gasket. There's no, you know, stretch bolts or anything crazy like that. So, what difference does it make how tight it really is? These aren't 10 mil bolts. These are 12s. It's a 14. It's a 12. bolted up. Um, we can come back through. I'm just going to do what torque spec I read in the uh, on the forums. Awfully conservative 28 foot pounds. One, two, three. Simple as that. Okay. <sighs> Next, I'm going to bolt on uh, this guy here. At least I'm fairly certain this should bolt fine. I'm 
I'm going to bolt this on just for the sake of demonstrating it. I might end up taking it off later in the video series just to get maybe the oil pump on. But this here, this is the tensioner assembly. This is what they call a newer style tensioner assembly, or at least what you'll be referred to as a newer style tensioner assembly. Uh, and it is newer in that it is uh, just one bolt and it's a swing arm style. So basically this bolt will sit here and this will swing to basically apply tension to the belt. Um, this is, I guess, the preferred style. I've got an older style here as well. I'll show it to you just so you know. Uh, I think the change happened in some 96, maybe even 95. But let's see, I've got an older style. This is the older style here. Uh, I call these linear just because they move in a line instead of rotating. And the idea is that this would push an offset pulley. Um, and this has got some kind of adjustment, and it's offset, and it's really bizarre. It seem, seems obvious why uh, guys don't prefer them as much as they prefer the, the newer style. So it's in my spare parts box, but I don't anticipate using it. Um, so I'm just going to bolt this guy on. I'm fairly certain these are 14 millimeter. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. Yeah. Now you can, t if you look, you can't you can't see it in the video, but I can see it here. There's a piece of uh, not all thread, a helicoil uh, in here, probably because somebody was just trying to prove themselves too much with an aluminum bracket and a bolt. Again, we're not setting the world on fire. We're not proving anything to anybody. We're just trying to bolt this Subaru back, back together. Now, actually, I'm going to unbolt this. I'm going to show you an interesting feature. These, these tensioners come with what's called a grenade pin. It's this thing here. And it's called a grenade pin because it's got a ring on it, and you'd pull it just like you would a grenade. Um, it's made of a hard, uh, hard shear strength steel, and the idea is that we want to pull that out as soon as we're done with everything else. Um, that's going to set the final tension on our belt, but we want to wait until we get there because if we don't wait, what's going to happen is it's going to unload and swing all the way open, and we're not going to be able to get our belt on because that thing is causing too much tension. Twenty-eight pounds. Okay, that leaves me three other bolts on the block. Uh, these are basically just for idlers, just pulleys that sit there and do nothing but spin. Um, you get two round ones, which go, if I recall correctly, here. And then you've got a sprocket one, which goes here. Uh, basically, they're on the long bolt. So these, I've all got, I've all got the bolts uh, just tucked away in the block. So one by one, I'm just going to unthread the bolt that was there. Put this guy back through. And start tightening them. These, I think, are 15s. No, they're 14s. 14 mil bolts all the way around, 28 foot, foot pounds all the way around. Fairly certain that the bolts here for these outdoor pulleys and the pulleys themselves are actually identical. So if you're doing a swap, or you you know you're doing what I'm doing, you're just reusing a lot of hardware, most of which seems really new. This stuff's in really good shape, uh, and that's why I'm reusing it because I feel pretty confident that its condition is of no concern to me. Uh, you can just you know doesn't matter which one goes where. They're identical sizes. They're identical bolts. Everything's identical between them and they're just there to sit there and spin, so it doesn't really matter what bolt goes where.
too. Alright everyone, I got all the idlers and stuff bolted onto the engine. They all spin really nice. Um, and I'm ready to start working on uh, oil pump and water pump. I believe oil pump is next if my uh, episode list is right. Uh, which means I'm probably going to be taking a lot of this stuff off and just putting it back on again. Um, but I just wanted to have one video that kind of talks about the proper uh, location for things on this engine uh, and basically where everything goes and how to get it all bolted up. That way I, you know, can help somebody else out there and I have a frame of reference for myself when I start taking things off and can't remember what goes where. So uh, stick around, got a few more things coming up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get the front end of this engine built. I uh, want to thank, uh, let's see, I want to thank Misha. He gave me the grenade pin. I didn't have one. Misha at Ecotech, St. Louis, Import, Auto Service. This is a place where all the Subaru guys seem to go. So, uh, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to uh, Darren, the co-driver. Uh, my boss helps me with a lot of uh, information, getting, grabs parts for me sometimes, and uh, helping the project come along. Um, and I want to, you know, Thank everybody else that's helped me along the way. Uh, we're going to have this engine hopefully done and in the car before too long. The goal is to get the car up and running by Show Me 2017, which is about a year away from now. We've already set the date. We've got a deadline, uh, and we're going to get this car moving. So stick around. Next few videos, we'll get this front end covered. Uh, hopefully in the next, uh, before too long, you'll see me putting the rear disc brakes on the car. Uh, I got the rear conversions now. I just got to wait for some steel brake lines, get some pads, and get those on. So that might be woven in somewhere. Uh, but, but yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Uh, stick around. You'll see some more videos before too long. Thanks.